परम निर्गुण शक्ति आय नम मूलधार स्थान देवत प्रकट करो कुंडलिनी जागो सहस्रार चक्चाले चलो कन कन मेरी तन अपना शक्ति दीजिए ब्रह्मन रक्षक दानव कनाश बीमारी कनाश अष्ट शस्त्र कनाश ओम ओम श्री गणेश आय नम ओम श्री महासरस्वते आय नम ओम श्री गुरुवे नम ओम अस्तु मदगमया तमसो ज्योतिर्गमया मृत्युरे मृत गमया ओ devotees the world is in a state of darkness and we are looking for knowledge which we are looking in the wrong direction the knowledge that we looking for is not on the outside it is found inside and there is a process how to go about finding this knowledge this knowledge is inside of us but who are we and where are we in this body we are situated in the base of the spine here and from here everything takes place well whatever we think whatever we do comes from here and it it moves up to the sahasrara chakra here where we become conscious of everything but how we will get that knowledge is by chanting the om the word is not om when chant properly it awakens the whole of the universe because the universe came from the om and the the shakti is what run in the whole universe it opens up every atom in the human body also and when chant properly this is how it moves from the muladhara chakra to the sahasrara chakra as shown in the diagram when we get to that point where we get connected with the muladhara chakra where we as seated we would realize that there is a energy flow in there and the nervous system the nervous system is connected to the where when we uh do pranayam we look at we feel that the prana is taken from the outside and brought inside but no when you breathe there is an automatic uh process which takes place the concentration opens up the shushumna which is at the base of the spine here again where you are seated and that energy energizes the nervous system from there because prana comes from within not from outside here at this point we realize that a different system 
of life where we believe in old age, sickness, and problems facing the physical body. But at this point here, when you get in tune with this here, you will realize how the body gets old, how the body gets sick, what is the cause of these things. Now, the body has a transcendental nature. And the transcendental nature, the metabolism works with the trend of the thought. That thought, wherever you think, is in that direction. The whole metabolism is projected. And if we think as in the outside, uh, as the world was looking for answers on the outside, our energy will become depleted because our thoughts are not focused in the center where the energy is coming from. And it is like a well that you're taking out water from on top. And when you reach a certain point, you cannot get, let us say, water again, except if you use certain things to go down deeper and deeper. But the final thing would be sickness and problems. And from there, when we start to get problems, this is how we end up with what we call the modern circular system, that we're looking for answers to solve these problems. And more we go is more we get in problems. When we tap this source of energy here and we hold on to it, we will be able to live to uh, unlimited time. This is where you would hear the word Jivan Mukta. The Jivan Mukta is someone who reached the stage that they have control of this energy and you will not be subjected to old age, sickness, and so forth. You can carry on as long as you want. And then you could give up the body if you want also. So sickness and old age. And there you would realize there are other knowledge that would come in there. Like, well, we will feel hungry when we use the, the modern system as we call the secular knowledge and so forth and our minds are on the outer um, thing. Now, what is hunger? Hunger is not something that we want food, what we call in food. When the nervous system cannot get contact with the energy that is inside, that it becomes irritated, and that creates a feeling inside that make us feel. But the things that we put into the body helps us to open our concentration back. And that helps us to go back down and open up the shushumna and energize the body. Which we, if we become conscious of that energy all the time and we energize the nervous system, as I said, we will not need what we call in food. To solve some of the problems of the present day where we're talking about the immunizing the body and so forth. Now what is the immune system? And where is the immune system? Can we define the immu immune system? The immune system is that energy which is flowing from the Kundalini. The energy is what modern science will call nerve force energy or life force energy. The yogis will call it uh, Shakti. No, and that is what the nervous system, the immune system is. If we understand this, 
then no part of the world where we look into, let us say, uh, build the immune system of people, we would shut down places of worship. When we realize that the immune system is a divine thing, and the divine process, that would, when we pray, in, would help us to develop the immune system. But the type of food we eat in also, even though we pray in, it also causes problem in that it it creates toxic matter in the body. And when it creates the toxic matter in the body, the immune system has to fight against this. And when it's fighting against this, you will have other things building up while the immune system is not. But if you use things like fruits and fruit juices, those have some natural chemicals that f helps and make it easy for the immune system to function. Like if we want to live a healthy life, for the time being you cannot cut off what you call in food because you get accustomed to that. So what we, we would do is for three days of the week, we can live on fruit juices and fruits. Next three days, you will eat well what we call in food. And one day for the week, we fast. And that will help the immune system to function. Because when, when we have pain in the body and different things, it is difficult for us to concentrate. And as I said before, where the thoughts are, that is how the metabolism will react. And we have to help the immune system rather than causing problem by eating the f things we call in food. When we do in devotion, we tend to feel that we are not getting results from what we are doing. It is not that you are not doing your devotion correct. You are doing it the same way all the time. And even the sp spiritual body, which is the immune system, you will feel that you are not getting that contact with the self. And you would feel that, um, well, we are not getting the benefits what, of what we used to get. This is not a problem that you are facing. This is a problem that is coming from an out outside force. At this point, most of the people, when they pray, they say God giving them problems or God giving them tests, uh, as the case might be. This is not so. When you do in your devotion and you reach where that point that God is giving you, God giving you energy, God will not give you tests. But there are negative forces that will not like to see you climbing up the ladder to meet them. So what they would do is they try to take you down and keep you at that low level. What we have to do is we, we have to continue our devotion. Like for example, the Shakti temples which do in the fire pass and so forth. That is very, very important for people because the negative forces cannot enter the fire. And every devotee have to continue doing the devotion. But to get rid of this negativeness is what we have to do is we have to have a place of worship where we'll build an energy field. And that energy field must develop to such an extent that for miles these negative forces cannot enter. 
and that will take constant devotion, non-stop devotion for years that would be. But that is possible when you develop an ashram that will be self-sufficient. Now, most people look at the example of what they see in on the outside these days. But when when you have when you really build an ashram and you you showing people how to live life and so that ashram will develop into a community that is self sufficient. It will not be dependent. You would be having almost everything that you want within that system there. But the devotion is the most important thing in that area. The devotion to create that energy field that the negative forces will not be able to enter. But with this system that we have in here, we will be getting rid of some of the the no knowledge that is causing problems to us in the world today. Right, there is a feelings that comes from the the um, the Kundalini. From the time you get in tune with that energy, the whole body feels divine. And that is how you know. And the difference is like presently as I am doing this here, I am doing it I know that I am not doing it up to the standard that I want it to be done. And the way we was, I was doing it in the first thing. It was because the first time when I called this said um, station, when I called this first time, the very said day, I got a spiritual shot that I could have died immediately on realizing what happened. Because the evil forces does not want this knowledge. This is knowledge that would save the world. And immediately when I realized this, what is going to happen, I tied myself in the body. And I was in my garden. I took my bicycle, which I used to go in the garden. And when I do so, I hide it in a place where I could find it after. And I saw a vehicle coming and I asked the father to drop me home I'm not feeling well and he did that when I called back when I got good from that situation and I called back this this station again to come and make the recording the amount of attacks I had gotten in a short space of time so you you know when you reach the stage of getting that divine feeling you know the negative feelings even up to now right now where i am here sitting you could feel how the forces trying to tear me apart through the nerves so that i do not connect properly that's why i'm glad i am proud to mention and say that i am not um doing it up to the standard but what i want devotees to look at and take is that traveling of the energy from the Muladhar chakra to the Sahasrara chakra so that when they sit down to meditate or to pray they will have a ready-made system that they would feel when they talking to anybody when they if they're doing anything you must feel that you're talking from the Muladhar chakra and you feel that that energy coming up to the Sahasrara chakra anything you're doing that must be the feeling whatever you're doing it is coming from there and that in itself would help you to to feel that divinity that you're talking about the negativeness is when you see the forces they can do a lot of things all the sicknesses that you see we have in in the country today and doctors can diagnose well what is the problem what they do 
is that they shut off the nerve. Like for example, diabetes. When I hear the, um, the diabetes problem that we have in, in the country, I used to tell my friends, no, it what happened, you had to do more devotion because the evil force is no easy to, to lock off that nerve going to the pancreatic glands. And when they shut off that, what happened? The gland cannot function. No insulin whatsoever. And this is where we will um, think. So the, the nervous system, they, when they interfere with that, it could cause plenty of problems. And the feelings in the body now would be different. It could be damaging, very irritating. Because I am talking from personal experience, and I can show right here. Look at an example of what I am talking about. These nails that you see in here, that when I am around in the garden, people ask me if it's chemical from the garden. I, I only tell them yes because they will not understand. This is negative forces doing this to destroy my whole body, not only here. At a certain time, they, they send certain types of chemicals that if you hold certain parts of your body a little hard, you feel like if it's going to drop off. Sometimes your air, you feel like now, well, <coughs> it'll focus on a different area to stop me from producing this knowledge that I have here. And it is going so for years upon years. But uh, that's the reason why I'm saying, I will say it again. I am proud to do it the way I am doing it so that people could get the knowledge and have an idea that what is taking place. God does not, when you reach the stage, now what is God and where is God? Is a big question. Now, we'll have to go a little bit and talk about knowledge, which I don't read. These knowledge that I'm talking here coming from experience, but for the people to understand, the arm thing is that you go to the Gita. When Krishna Bhagavan said, he said, I am not in this creation. I am running this creation with one spark of my yoga maya. He said, I am not in this creation. Then, sorry, it his principles he running it by, the laws of nature. And every atom that is created is created with his energy. And every atom is also conscious. Everything is very conscious in a divine way. That if you look at a plant, you will feel that, that you know, that plant is not, you know, conscious. But from, again, from personal experience, I had two experiences with in the same place where I had the experience. The Tulsi tree, when I was approaching, it had a patch of Tulsi. And the Tulsi tree had bathed me down with the Tulsi perfume. And why did the Tulsi did that? Did that? It had to be conscious of somebody of a good quality nature is coming. And a few months after, the Gainda tree gave a similar um, thing that with the perfume of the Gainda flowers, the same thing happened again. So from that experience and other experiences also, like for example, we may look at the, the animals and feel that they are a little lower than us in intelligence and so forth. But that is not so. We cannot understand them until when we go and we mix with them and we see their intelligence. Like for example, I had an, an experience with some fowls. They messing up the place and I couldn't take it, I don't like that. I like it place to be clean. And I happened, it had the two main 
fall in the batch. The rest was not around anywhere. And I hit the two of them. And they went and had a conversation or a meeting with the rest of her who were not there in no sight at all. And from the time those folks see me, they were running from him because they know he and they were not there. How it is, if we look at, you know, intelligence, and they did not see. So they are so much developed also. Everything is conscious. Once you have that energy that God create, they create. That's the reason why they will say that nothing cannot move without the power of God. That is the power of God. But it's not God there directly doing this. And they, they, they would lose their business because when when your spirit you early develop and you share in your own thing, their duty is to capture you. And if you given out this knowledge, then they lose in business. Now, now this creation is what we call a Maya creation, and it is made up in such a way that. Two forces have to carry on this until it is given a limited amount of time. Maya is not unreal, but is up to a period of time. It is a limited period of time it would exist for. Like um, a bubble. A bubble will form from water until it bursts. But this creation is given millions of years. But both forces now have to fight for sup supremacy. And the two forces are like the Deuters and the Rakshasas. And they now, fighting for su supremacy, they will cause problems to the devotees. Now, the good one who follow in the Deuters and the Devis, the Rakshas, will try to do harm to them. And and so the creation is really going for this period. And the period of time that it was allotted to has come to an end almost. It is in the last uh, quarter of the, um, the kalp. It was given a period of 28 uh, kalp. And this is the 28th one. And we are in the Kaliug of the 28th Kalp. So this period, would, but the fight is there. It's not that, um, as I was saying before, that God, you know, do, people assume because they do not know. They never, s even in Vedanta philosophy, you'll find people, they would be reading the philosophy and talking the philosophy. But when you really actually, this, what I'm, Showing here with the the um, thoughts manifesting in the Kundalini and going up to this Sahasra Chakra. This is what is Vedanta philosophy. But when you um, when you realize that, you will uh, you will start talking a different language. You will not talk like the uh, so much senses and and the other thing. You realize is only one thing does everything in the body and that's the art man will come back now to god and where is god in the creation and so forth the god in the creation is you the atma you that's the reason why when men like ravan herna keshap and these people realize how the creation is run by the laws of nature according to how God created it, is run by the laws of nature. And uh, they realize that when they develop their, their spiritual powers through the meditation and so forth, they realize, hey, I can have command over nature to a certain extent. And then I will make people believe that I am God. You know? And this is how 
some people believe in what they call, you know, God. But even an avatar is not really God. It's a partial manifestation of God. And these people who come in and making us believe that um, they are gods and they, um, we follow in them, we do not know how much harm they are doing. Because I have personal experience, but the purpose of this um, discourse here is I want people to mind to the, the whole engineering system of the body to be channeled back in the right place. And if I go to tell you or see some of the beings who are negative, I will be further disturbing your engineering system from becoming what it's supposed to be. And I had personal experience with them doing damage. And people who worship them, I saw them going down the drain. And because of that, and the one they worshiping, I am begging them, helping them, and doing everything. And they still could not, because they give up themselves to those beings. And you, when they give up themselves, you can't have control over them. Thing. So when they reach this stage and they, they develop themselves, they feel, well, look, I am God. I will make people believe I am God. And I'm thinking, you can develop yourself to a very high extent. And when you develop yourself, you develop yourself for the benefit of, let us say, humanity. You don't use these powers to do negative things and cause problems to the world. It have people who, like me, develop, will see you going up, and they try to stop you too, you know. Yeah, but I am not the person like that. If I see you going up, that's why I come out, and I'm doing this, as I am, I will say it many times, it is not up to the standards I want to put it out, and the value of what be depth I wanted the concentration that when you hear me talking, you actually feeling what I show in the, in the diagram, the movement of the arm thing. And you feeling it. When you close your eye, you seeing it there too. But it have many other people going up. When they see you going up, they just want to. So it's not only the negative forces like we will come to the arm, um, the two, like the Deutas and the Davies. I mean, the Deutas and the Rakshasas, the Guru of the, well, that, that word, <laughs> um, we, the word Guru means light, right? So the Guru of the, the, um, the Deutas is to help the Deutas and the followers there. But they, they use a word with the, the negative forces, which is the, um, the Rakshas and them. They just call the head of that. Guru Sukracharya. Guru means one who spreads light. He is creating havoc. So, how, how will we say Guru in that res respect? It's not Guru there. It's, um, you would say, the leader of the negative forces, the Rakshasas. And um, their duty is to fight against and build their um, side of things. Well, as I say, God does not um, test you. When you do in your devotion, you get in the value of your devotion to suit. What happened there is, um, I was born for this purpose, what I am doing here. And as I say, I've been stopped for long, that's why I'm doing it, even though it's not done to the best. 
um, I, w I was told to leave even academic education because that is what's going to destroy the world. I was in secondary school. Go home, what you have inside of you is what's going to save the world. And I have no regret up to today with that um, thing. But one of the things that I could have excelled in was in cricket to the highest level. And even though I was deep in the spiritual thing, I went to see a cricket match. And he came and he blocked me there. You're in the wrong place. You're, this is not your thing again. You give up everything. You have to be. Now, the reason why you have to think, um, when you want to attain spiritual knowledge, the, as I say before, the body reacts and the muscles and everything reacts towards the thought that you project. So if you're in that area, where will the thoughts go? And your purpose is to develop the energy that you have inside of you. And that's the reason why you have to be focused in one place rather than... That's the reason why um, I come back again to Binauda uh, Bhakti that um, was given by Bhagwan Sri Ram to Shabri Mata that um, in the sixth form of devotion where he said um, you must be living according to the laws prescribed for saint and desisting from the manifold activities. The reason for that is, as I said, the energy will be channeled in, in different direction. It will be easier and you you attain spiritual knowledge faster. But even though you're living in this world and you you could still channel your energy. Like for example, in the morning, you get up, you you do your sandhya in the morning. You go about doing your normal daily work. If you have a period of a lunch time, you could still take a few minutes at that time and do some chanting and attune back yourself because the energy will be moving in different direction. When you come back home in the evening time, you do your sandhya again. And with if you do this constantly, it would be very easy for you to get in tune with the energy that which we are living. Well, um, you get up, um, you offer some gel to Surya Narayan Swami, you, um, you could do a havan, you could do some meditation, and then you could chant, um, like during the day when you're outside, you have the Hanuman Chalisa. Now one thing I would like um, people to know, and as far and wide, those who love Ramayan, Ramayan, we have a Ramayan Chalisa that is written by uh, Professor H. S. Adish, and he also have a Guru Chalisa, which those three Chalisas, the Hanuman Chalisa, the Guru Chalisa, and the Ramayan Chalisa. The Ramayan Chalisa with Hanuman Chalisa because Hanuman Baba is a devotee of Bhagwan Ram. So that will help. And in the evening time, when you come back, you, you light your dear in the evening time, you sit, you offer flowers, and you sit and you do some job. You do some meditation. And that helps so much to balance back the body that when you go to rest, all, it will help the tension that is in the body. It releases those tension. All right. Well, the the Gayatri mantra, which which is about the 
most powerful and the triambaka mantra um what I, I would like people to do is hanuman baba mantra a, a, any one of his gayatri you could use that because um hanuman baba is left here to see about the devotees and what we doing we we doing some of his um thing eh? but we are running to other things and if you it come like if you fall in a um a barrel and you you have other containers around too but you throw some in the barrel and you're going in the other container and throwing it take you a longer time and by that time it have other devotees even the negative forces would have enough time to block you from your devotion but his devotion and all the other devotion to is done that you help them to to stand with you when it because the more you call them they will come and energize you when they energize you you become a force to be reckoned with and the tree sandhya is very very important like for example the guru chalisa the um, hanuman chalisa and the ramayan chalisa those will be so and i am telling you that the the, the ramayan chalisa and the guru chalisa is written by a man whom i admire i don't really admire much people who his writing is to such an extent then but it could be uh said that is done with perfection in the sense that whatever he is doing he never did it with the ego he did it with devotion and according to the rules of the scripture even some songs and everything that he he made that is so well done that that alone is prayers by itself but you sing the song you learn the songs and you you are um, meditating for you have him singing and it is taking you at a very high level i why am telling you this i had experience in a very early is when he came here he did he used to do ramayana yoga and when i go in that yoga and he did his sumiran i saw hanuman baba came there in such a big form i was surprised because the other people sumiran karin it's you see in them small besides that when he start to sing the ramayan you feel you are at a elevated stage and you like you in a a plane above earth then when you come down from there you feel so energized that i used to for me time i hear he's doing a yaj i always so the chalisa and the the good guru chalisa and the ramayan chalisa plus the hanuman chalisa if you use those you need the three different sandhyas but the other devotees and devis are very important you see um in this creation the devotees and devis are there to worship we cannot do without those things but we cannot see that we will remain only at that level you have to go to the higher level and the devotees and devis they will help you to go at the higher level it, 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 just like how it, the um hanuman chalisa gives you hanuman baba um thing the ramayan chalisa is excerpts from from the ramayan itself and when you you chant the name ram you chant the krishna you say any of the bhajans you sing at sandhya any of the sandhya time but those chalisas has more you know in it than the um thing that it, it will help you a little extra because it is given with a certain amount of devotion you know you see it would depend on your likeness and thing but um we're not supposed to like one 
more than the other because they all have their function to do. And like Surya Narayan, he has his function to do and we must worship him. We must, if Ganga Mata, even the Dharati Mata people does not um, show appreciation for Dharati Mata. But where are we living? We, we are doing all the things on Hala and we're not thinking, hey, we should worship Dharati Mata. But again, in the first time when I was doing the recording and I got cut off, I had my Sumiran of Dharati Mata in, in early in the, in the mantra, chanting of the mantras there. And I never left her out in my prayers. I always give her what belongs to her. So all the duties and devies, you, you respect them equally. Like for example, um, if they, they say that if you ignore Shiv Baba and you go by Vishnu Bhagwan, Vishnu Bhagwan will not be pleased that you ignore Shiv. And similarly with Brahma Bhagwan, if, if you think he would, you know, make, make you realize it's not right for you to. You see what happened in, we have certain social concepts about Vedutas and Devis that not really, you know, true one thing, that we, because of cert certain reasons, we may um, want to feel that whether we propagate this and we do this and, and that came about because people do their devotion and they get a little bit of blessing and this is what they want to, and they want to make you feel this one is more important, that one is more important. None is more important than the other because they all serve in a purpose. Look, even all right, a nice thing I remember here now that um, the God of debt, when you hear people talking about the God of debt, they feel like you've really seen something what they call a devil and that kind of thing. That's a deuter. He has a portfolio, he has his work to do. And he cannot come and demand you anything. It is when the time is right, he will come at that time. He, and you will not be, let us say, wanted of a, if you are a person spiritually developed, at that time he will not come by you. Because he knows that you can um, go at will when you, when you want. So people look at uh, Yam Deuta as a negative um, thing. I offer my thing, even my horn, to him. Because all the duties and devies have to be energized. If you, if you do energize them, what will happen? The negative forces can command them to do things. You, you, you're going to um, the uh, inside you find in yourself now. When you find yourself, you will be going deeper and deeper into yourself through meditation. And when, when you reach that point there, you will not, even though you're going to a point that you cross the Deuta level, you will not ignore them because you realize that they are the ones running the whole creation. That is why the, this is the Deuta look. Meditation is simple concentration, right? And after a point, when you when you sit, you sit like this. Sometimes, well, you will just, the people will tell you that. But when you sit like this, and you could hold your hands like this, and you breathe in. Now you breathe slowly, and you keep watching the breath. Now when does he keep watching the breath? You watching the breath going inside. When it reaches here, my advice to you at that point is to hold it there and keep chanting whatever mantra that you are um, saying. 
The reason for that is because the forces are waiting there to channel you in different direction. And you have to always be conscious of yourself in the body. And it is not to say that you're frightening anybody. But when you're doing this, if you have your guru, you use the guru mantra. And Lord Shiva is the one who, well, yoga and meditation and so forth. He, you can use him as a guru in meditation. And after a period of time, now you have, when, you, when you're doing this, some people say they meditate and they are something, but to help you to, to go deeper, fasting helps very, very much. And fasting, the chemistry of the body will be such at a, a, a pure stage that your, your mind will not want to go on the outside. Your mind, your mind, your thoughts, in fact, will be focused inside. And that helps you to get faster to yourself. And from there, you're going deeper and deeper into yourself. Now, this is how people become intelligent. What is intelligence? Intelligence is not um, to say that you read a book and you develop intelligence. To a certain extent, yes, it will help you, but it is not coming from there. It is coming from concentration. Intelligence is a product of the transcendental nature of the human engineering system. It is a product of the transcendental nature. That's when the deeper you get inside of you, that Shakti and energy is so pure that you become more and more aware of the divinity then. And that is what intelligence is. So when you see a person that is very intelligent, that means that they are spiritually developed. Even people who excel in any form or anything, they don't know where that or how that is happening. But because that is divine energy you're using to do whatever you're doing and you're excelling, whether it be in a business or sports or anything like that. Yes, you could <clears throat> be in all those things as I say, but what you have to do is the Sandhya periods that you help yourself. The intelligence is the spiritual um, values that you have. Not book. Not book, no. Oh, all right. The, it, when you read the Vedas and, and Ramayana and things, you still, you know, it had to come from inside. It is um, spiritual development that caused you to understand the Vedas. You had to have the intelligence when you read to understand. So that coming from inside. And that helps you how to go about meditating and to get inside the Ramayana and the Vedas and so forth. Um, well, some people say the fasting, but um, what I would say is fruits. You live on fruits for, like, I lived for years on fruits. And I felt so good that I didn't care to eat. Up to now, I'm not eating salt. But I eat, you know, some of the cooked things without salt and things. Which, when you see you get in tune with the fruits, you don't want to go back to the because the divinity in the body is so present and you become conscious of it that you don't want to lose that. For years I, I had done that. And up for it's 20 years now, I'm not eating salt and I work in garden. And the problems that I am facing is not that the salt is The problem I'm facing is the negative forces fighting me for the knowledge that I have and they don't want me to put it out in the way it's supposed to be put out. Um, 
All right. What happens is people feel that um, the world is a secular world. And this secular world, which they feel, the secular world now, as I said before, is what they did, the academic system, right? Now, they feel that you have something also that you call um, physical strength and sp spiritual strength. There is nothing like physical strength. Everything is spiritual. You're using even the spiritual energy, because even the, the rakshasas in them, they use, um, they pray to the deuters and got the, the blessings, and then they start using it wrong. What is, what is um, if you look at how the body functions, the nervous system, without the nerves in the body, you don't have anything in the body. Then where the physical strength come from? It is from the nerves, and the more you concentrate, and the, the wider the, the capacity of your concentration, that, that is, if it is connected to the Kundalini area, that energy would flow in a bigger volume, and you will feel strength. But let something just shut off the, the energy from the base there, and you have no strength. And all the weights that people could be lifting in arm um, thing, all you have to have spiritual strength to do those things. Is, it, is spiritual strength using to do everything? In? Whether you be a sportsman, whether you are a, a yogi, whether you are a, even the, the, the person who is stealing. He also, everybody in the negative field also. But you're using it in the wrong direction. So when, when you, you develop in yourself, you develop in yourself to be able to live in this world, like Sanatan Dharma. We, people not living according to how it was designed. They just going through certain um, things. Sanatan Dharma was designed with the engineering system of the universe and the engineering system of the human being. It was made up in such a way that when we come here, we will enjoy this world. We'll enjoy this world. And when we enjoy, the, while enjoying this world, we will yet still end up by God. Or we'll call it moksha. Now, how that is mounting? We have 16 sanskaras to follow. And those would be in four stages that you have Balkan, you know, or, or the childhood state, the, the Grihastha Ashram, then the Vanapas and the Sanyas. Like four stages you have in, in life. And this is how Sanatan Dharma is designed for us to, when we come here. But we're not living according to, so we call in one a material world or a secular world, and we call in one a spiritual world. And when you leave out, what you call them, they feel they leave out the spiritual world, but you're leaving out your divine energy. And that's why, as I said before, old age, sickness, and problems would definitely be the, the result of that. Enjoy your life. That is what we, we came here for, to enjoy life. But how you'd enjoy life? You have to learn first. That is why, the, the, according to Sanatana Dharma, the um, Brahmachari stage or the Val stage. You go through the ashram stage. And when you develop yourself to a point that you, you, in an ashram life, it's not that you just go there and you um, think it, and you're just doing little things around it. When you finish there, you're supposed to be a, a completely developed person that you can fit yourself in a in society and make good of society also you know it's not to say that you you um what people looking at well they didn't understand it because if you if they had understood the values of the knowledge and thing they would be able to let us say well hey look you know this is a wrong road win 
Like for example, when I was going to secondary school and I got the, the, I, the, the knowledge, don't study that this will destroy you all. You have to study, do what's inside of you. Now I w used to watch and compare and up to today, I have no regrets that I give up everything, even though I could have been a doctor, I could have been a lawyer, I could have been an engineer or something. I have no regrets. I am so happy that even as I said, the sports was, was nice to me. I had loved it. I give up that and I have no regrets. Up to today, my life is a clean person in the religious life. Everything that I do. I was buried. And I have no regrets for anything that I do up to this point. Even to teach people, to help people, to do things for people, I will do that at any time. Anywhere I go and I mix with people and people find that, you know, you, you're moving, you just like to do things for, you know, thing. And they feel that you like, you know, not consider the value of what you're doing as a good person. If you, you know, like in places they have people, you know, you watch them and say, well, let them, because they like to do that and thing. When you're helping people, you help people with joy so that they elevate themselves. You don't help people to ridicule people. And this is what problems we're having in society. If somebody help you, they, you must be like a slave to them. And um, you help and you just let it go like that. When, when you get, now this is a nice um, thing because people ask this question many times and they um, think that how it is people praying to God and they using this, they get it and they're doing bad with it, meaning that it come from God. But it come like, like this, a parent have children and he has wealth and they satisfy to a point that the parents say, well, you take so much you take so much. Now, whatever you do with that wealth that you have there is your arm um, thing. If you use it to go down the drain, and if you use it to help yourself, develop yourself, it will thing. So, when they get their, their bones, they use it according to their... But, but um, to a certain extent, I think people didn't understand how the creation, as this come like once I said, this creation come, whatever you, you see in this creation, it was meant to be. But it is like this. Everything you see, it has a fruit in it. The fruit, some tree have bitter fruit, some have sweet fruit. Whichever one you choose, that is what. But the creation was meant to be what it is. There's no doubt about it. But people, you see, and uh, well, you could do it because um, at the end of every cult, you go back into the creation again and you come back. So the people will not have memory of, you know, very few, few would have memory to go from one cult to the next because of your devotion, but then you would be able to have that. So whatever there you see in this creation, everything is there for you. But you have to know what is for you and what is not for you. Like me, I realized by the help of God, uh, so I could not do anything else except what. And I'm so happy I didn't do it until today that I am doing a little bit of what I'm supposed to do. And if people get to realize what I'm saying, that we need to have an ashram where we must be self-sufficient and we must be, after we develop that to become self-sufficient, we will benefit from it in every form, any form, if you look at it. But 
you must have the, re the right leadership and the right person to guide and go along. Otherwise, at a certain time, you find things, if you're not developed spiritually and thing, and you, then things go differently. If people can do this, it will be one of the best thing you ever think. This is what, like, um, Guruji wrote in one of his songs. He s said, let this place become like a heaven. That, what I am talking about, could become something like a heavenly place when you have a ashram with devotion like that. Well, um, a person who is who has no desire for name, fame, and um, these kind of thing, you're doing it just because of you know helping people, helping society, and so. That's very so yeah, it must be spiritually developed to have all those qualities. That's the reason why I. I would like that because I have the plan, a big plan. That's why I'm saying it could be self-sufficient, it could be everything that you want and plenty of the fake things that you get in from the outside world and thing that is not good for human health and all that kind of thing. You will be getting your own, producing your own things in that area. What we talk. It is a big project that could be accomplished in a quick time and we just had to work towards that. That is, you, you are the Atma in that area, really. sitting in the Kundalini. So the Atma, that is the house for, housing for the Atma. The, and the Kundalini is in the Shushumna. The Shushumna is when you take a breath, automatically it opens up. And if you sit down and you're quiet and you think, you will realize there is a movement here. Rather than you looking for this to fill with any, um, air. Now what happens here when the air is filling the lungs? That automatic concentration which opens up there. It helps to hold at the base of the spine a concentration to release this energy. And it, when it releases, it's uh, they energize the whole nervous system. And that's the reason why you come back to chanting the Om. Now, when you chanting, when you chanting mantras at the end of every uh, mantra you chant, you should chant Om. Like if you say Om Bhur Bhuva Swaha Tat Savitur Varinyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimai Dhyo Yona Prachodayat Om. You see what happened there? The Om there. Why do you chant in it could arm thing? So the um sound helps to every part ending part of the nerve to be energized. To keep the body, you know, an arm thing without any pains, negativeness and so forth. So that the um, kundalini is where all the knowledge is situated. In fact you are like like um well, I was talking to somebody one day and um, I said, you don't have an Atma. You are the Atma living in the body. And you are situated in the Kundalini area, in the Shushumna then, where the Kundalini is. And it's from there. Now most of the times we um, look at, we feel that 
well, we think through the brain. We don't really think. The brain only receives. That's the reason why the, the movement uh, from the base of the spine to, to the top of the, the Sahasrara Chakra, that's why I did that um, thing for people to realize what is happening. And we become conscious. Now there is another piece of knowledge that we could talk about that I wouldn't talk yet about that because it could be like confusing people to a certain extent. That um, it come like you te teaching quadratics in elementary school. It, it is not a um, thing. After that time when you develop uh, to a certain point, you realize, hey, look, that is true. We do have five or ten senses. That is only elementary level when you're going to normal thing. You'll feel that it is like that. So every thought, every transaction that is taking place is the, is the Atma. The Atma, is, without the, the thought, the, the, uh, nothing can, can happen if the, if the thought doesn't come from the Atma. And who, who is thinking? Is the Atma. And when, when the Atma thinks, the, the nerves react and that is how the body functions. So with with this um, type of knowledge, if we like, I would like the schools to. If we cannot get into the schools in a b bigger way, what I would like them to do now, not only here, wherever this could be seen, that in the morning, if they could chant the Om, like even the elementary schools, eleven times. The secondary schools, they could do it 21 times. When you reach lunch time, they do it the same amount of time when you're leaving to go for lunch. When you come back, you do that. And in the evening time when they're leaving, and like in the, like the Sunday in the morning time, that something, they could chant the Om. Or if you want to do the mantra or whatever, you know, it depends on the individual, you know, what they came for, the purpose they came here for, and they, they will line up to suit that. When, when, when you spiritually develop and you experience those things, you, what you're doing, you're actually taking a person from where you are and you're putting them in that same position. So you want them to, to see and feel that area there to that extent. The other chakras, yes, automatically that will go through and pass through and um, thing. But you're not bypassing them to say um, thing. And the whole body, well, from the time that happened, the, and the shushuna open, opens up, the energy goes out to flow through the nervous system. But when you get it under control and you have it from here now, there is nothing like like sickness and and problem and thing again. Now you healing and curing. And I will tell you something. This is what the evil forces and I have three of them people praying to. I know them and they but more than the kind of what they pray into, yeah, people. And those three of them is presently wrong trying to stop this what I am doing here up to now and that's why I will say it again I will not stop it I will do it if it looking not up to the best standard but I am satisfied that people getting knowledge they are, they have been informed and I wish the place clear that we can I can go and do such some throughout the country just for the benefit of people because this knowledge is very very important this is the only thing to save the world even what we, we're looking at the problem that we face in, in the world today that is what we want we need the, the immune system what they're talking about the things that they put in inside the body I will not approve of that because when you, if you have a clean sheet and you 
you take some dirt and you put it in on it, what happened with that? And the same thing is, if my body is go good and healthy and strong, I have to go and take that and put it inside of me. Hoping that, you know, that will not come. Suppose when you put it, because I, I know two fellas took the arm, the vaccine, the two, and in three, three months time apart, both of them gone. So, I, I will not approve of that. You see, like, the system of the fruits and so forth and thing, that you, you, you can develop your immune system. And as I said before, if we know what is the immune system, we'll never close down or stop churches from functioning, whether it be a mosque, whether it be a church, a, a mandir, or a ashram, any, any place of worship. You will not stop it. So those who are doing what they're doing, they're, they're assuming and, and hoping, but I am not assuming and hoping. I know what is the immune system. I know how to um, stimulate it. And if you go about doing that, that will help you. In fact, I had a friend who was who was captured by one of the three men who is here presently trying to stop me. He was captured by that fellow and ran one of the best Mandir Shakti Mandirs in the country. I used to help him in it. And when I go there, he talking about he's afraid of COVID here when people come. I say hello. Is not you afraid? What happened? Is the person who will capture you, making you feel that fear inside of you? I say I could tell you right now, this man there can help heal COVID cases. I say I am here feeling it right now, and I am telling you, it could help heal. And it is no doubt that the devotion that was done was plenty. So from experiences like these, that's the reason why I said, uh, and I will say it again, if we know what is the immune system, we will never close down places of worship. We will always encourage it. That is because your spiritual development. No, uh, all right. You, what happens is people are spiritually developed. You know, everybody, whether it be a white man, Chinese, African, Indian, because from the time coming, you d develop in yourself spiritually. And at this point, if let us say you meet a person who come to tell you about how to develop yourself and how to you make your spiritual ending. You know what they would tell you? They would tell you, hey boy, it would take you so much years to prepare you and then you're going to start and and this time, you know, you are more spiritually developed than that person and he telling you things different to what you know. Um, the spiritual values in these people is so much that it awakened. I went in a yacht once and this girl energy the pundit was singing and the energy started to flow and she started to pick up that divine energy and I'm thinking and nobody was there to to help her and I'm thinking and people look at it in all different forms but I realized it was divine energy and it calmed down for itself because after a certain period of time, it will go down. It should take some time. So w the energy that is um, opening, that is because people are spiritually developed. Is yet w watch me. It it could take people just overnight. And when I say overnight, to open that energy that I am talking about, if you only focus your mind properly. I I have experienced that people with two people. In their first sitting in meditation, went deep 
deep, deep inside of themselves. And when they come out back, they got a title, a spiritual title, and started healing and curing people. So when we, um, we could listen to people, but what I am telling you here is real facts and what I experience. They said I experience these things. It's not to say that, you know, somebody tell me or I read it in a book. Like people say the, the dead don't um, talk and they don't come back and tell you anything. And those, I had experience with people coming and, and talking to me and I'm thinking. And you don't be afraid of them. Like this is a nice thing I would like people, no matter who it is, but more so the Hindu population. When parents die or ancestors or any, for anybody in the family die and they come in around, people used to tell them, run them, do this, do that, the other. The people come in to probably protect you and you do not know. I said this many times. When the evil force is going to interfere with me seriously, my father used to call me out. And I say yes. I will say yes, Pa. I know what you're going to tell me. I watch it. If it had to interfere with my sisters and them, my mother would call and I say yes, Ma. Your parents are looking over you all the time. Even if they go on, people who doesn't have experience, they would say lots of things and you know, make you believe different and them. When your parents, let us say, grew you up and everything and bring you to such a stage, would they come now to harm you if they come in by you? They will not come to harm you. They will come for your benefit. You're supposed to welcome them because they want to seek your interests. Um, they could start in, in a, a simple way, you know, you know it, because for three days you could survive on, on fruit juices and things. And next three days, and if the one day you cannot do without food and, and the fruit juices, we could use some fruit juices and things. And go like that because I think it hardly have people so um, think that they can um, live to that um, thing. They, they learn, like for example, the Ramayana Chil Chalisa. I don't think people have heard it before. Mm. When they um, get, if they get the book, that would be also um, very good for them. So um, they could have the plate, get it an um, thing, and but the book you could read it. It's simply written in um, Hindi, written in English, and all. So the, and the translation in it also there. So um, they could do this. It, like people who knows nothing about it, they could start simpler, that uh, thing. And I, people who have the will to do it, they will do it. Start and even some people like, for example, when I met my first guru, and he watched me. He put me on ninety days, only fruits. No, no food. Yeah, no food. And I went the full 90 days. And um, when the 90 days finished, I went and I told him, I said, 90 days finished. He said, um, well, you're working your fast now. I said, no, um, me I feeling to go back and eat no food and thing. He said, what? But at that time, the energy had opened up already. So when you get that energy flowing, you do um, you, the, the divine feeling that you have, you don't want to lose that. Even sometimes you, you're doing things and you, you do so, like for example, if, if I do in my gardening, 
and I have work to do to finish off something, and I see there is a break in my concentration, I leave everything and I go home. Take a bath, go and light my hawan kun, and sit down and do my devotion. And when you go back there, the work that you were supposed to finish done so, so fast and so easy. So instead of if you stayed there, what would happen is you lose your energy, you lose your balance, and you, you're losing almost everything there. So the, the better thing to do in, in a case like, if, if you, you um, find yourself in a situation like that, then that you lose now concentration and you feel that the thing that you had to fight for is very valuable don't fight for it because when we feel as I said we could get things or accomplish things yes we could because of our previous karma but when you um, do so on your own thing you you cannot willfully say, I am going to get this. When you when you go and you, as I said, when I go home, I bid, I do my own thing. That is what helped me now to make things easier there. And then you would be able to accomplish that. Other than that, you would lose everything and lose your balance and everything and all. Like that. All right, devotees, with this, I hope that some of this knowledge will be taken and put into practice and I hope that the place could clear up that we could do some satsang and try to organize and see if we could get what I am thinking about to build an energy field where we could get rid of some of these negative forces. With this, I will be closing until Om Asutoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrityorema Amritam Gamaya Shanti, 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 oh.